ever wondered what it's like to be an artist? What makes them tick? How do they know where to start? How do they become artists in the first place? Where do they get their ideas from? And more importantly, what do they eat for breakfast? Here at Swindon Museum and Art Gallery, we are lucky enough to look after the Swindon collection of modern British art. Over 600 artworks from the last 150 years, from paintings to sculptures by some of the biggest names in British art. This is what happened when we went to meet them. Come with us and meet the artist. Welcome to Meet the Artist with Swindon Museum and Art Gallery. This is the interview series where we talk to artists um, about their practice and try and find out a little bit more about what makes them tick and what inspires them and what drives their practice. The artists that we're interviewing are all, all have work in Swindon Museum and Art Gallery's collection of modern and contemporary British art, which is one of of its kind, one of the most important of its kind. So we are very, very lucky to have it right here in Swindon. And we're also very lucky to be joined by our first ever Meet the Artist guest, Simon Carter. Uh, Simon is a painter of gorgeous landscapes, which are characterised, as you can see, by the piece behind him, by incredible expressive brushwork and a gorgeous sensitive use of colour. Um, and Simon's going to tell us a little bit more about his practice today. And just to, uh, I guess, give you a bit more of an introduction to uh, Simon, he trained at the Colchester Institute and the North East London Polytechnic. And since has exhibited very, very widely. So uh, I believe in Messam's right here in Wiltshire and of course Swindon Museum and Art Gallery and uh, slightly further afield as well. I think as far as perhaps China and America. So he has uh, really uh, took the world by storm with his paintings, which is fantastic. And he's also the, uh, one of the founders of the Contemporary British Painting Group, which we'll hear a little bit more about later. Hi Simon. Hi. Hi. Um, maybe we can start by just finding out a little bit more about where you are right now in the world. Where, where are you based and why are you based there? Well I'm based on the Essex coast, on the northeast Essex coast, um, a little town called Frinton-on-Sea and um, I live about a mile away outside Frinton and I've got a, a couple of units which I use, um, I rent as a studio in Frinton. And uh, my family have been based around here. My father's family are farmers and they farm around here. So we've been living here a long time. And um, I think I'm living here by default rather than by decision. I use the landscape as a like, source material for um, my paintings. And it's a, it's a landscape I've known all, well, all my life really. So it's, it's almost like it's, um, it's like a, an encyclopedia of possible things that I can use in painting. And because I've known it all my life, I feel free to use it, but also it feels like part of me. It's part of my inner self as well. So is that part of the reason why you think you're drawn to land, painting landscapes is that is something that's really been surrounding you your whole life and it's, and it's kind of, um, you know, I think some of the best art is really inspired by what you know. They, they, that's what they always say, isn't it? Sort of talk about or paint about, write about what you know. I think um, there's, there's no reason I shouldn't be, you know, I shouldn't make, paint portraits or still life or something like that. But I think you just go with what you feel in your, in your inner kind of self and that. And it's the landscape that really interests me. And it's a very specific landscape. Um, it's about six or seven miles of coastline centred on my studio. Do a lot of drawing and I, I think that um, drawing is like the where it all happens where it's where the source of everything is and so I go um, I've got certain routes that I walk through the landscape and uh, make drawings um, during that so I might in a week I might say spend two sessions outside 
yeah, I, I used to go out drawing every day. I don't know. I spend maybe maybe twice a week I go out and I'll come back with a dozen or a couple of dozen drawings and they kind of feed into the process. But I think that being outside, walking in the landscape and just responding in very quick, um, sort of basic kind of sketching, really, sort of just a few lines and marks and things responding to what I'm seeing. But that's the source material for what I do in the studio. And how do you get from walking and that sketching to creating the work you create? The, um, what I think the drawing does, I mean, the, the walking and being in the landscape is just nice anyway, but um, you can't mistake just something that's nice to do with something that you need in the work. So I think the drawing is essential. And, um, but what it's doing is opening up a, a space in which I can paint, but a drawing opens up these possibilities, you know, a couple of lines to represent a horizon is much more interesting than a very intricate drawn horizon. <laughs> Um, I, I tend to want to go on a long journey with my paintings, so I don't want to finish it the first or second day. I, I, a few months down the line, I still want to be thinking about it. So I tend to sort of not finish it deliberately. So I'm sort of pushing it all the time, but not trying to resolve it. But slowly the painting starts to speak to you. Mm. And um, artists have used all sorts of strange language about how you know the painting's finished. but I've, you're having some kind of conversation with the painting and at some point you've said the things you want to say and you both sort of stop but it's the painting I think the longer you do it inside yourself you kind of know when it's done and there's a little voice in the back of your head when you come in the studio in the morning and the first time you look at it and you say and this little voice says oh no that's that yellow's a bit strong or that green's a bit dead now, or that red's not quite right. And you've got to pay attention to those and just go with it and be brave. There was a set of paintings, set of 14 little paintings, which actually the one over here is one of them, which I started possibly three, four years, three years ago, I think. And I was never quite never quite convinced that the whole set was working so actually at the moment I'm rewalking the routes that I took in making those paintings and making new drawings and I'm starting to paint a few new paintings but also rework some of the older ones but it's I think all the work I do has a continuation to it so there's not a point when I change from one thing to another although over lockdown and being in this studio I've been in here for all day every day since March and during that time, I have been painting with little baby paintings on paper of just things in the studio, which is kind of a new thing for me. So um, you're just trying things out all the time and seeing what happens. It was set up, um, well, initially set up, I think around about 2012, 2013. And myself, and my friend Robert Priseman, who is also a painter and a curator and an art writer, um, we thought, we felt that painting had, I mean, I think a lot of people thought, have thought this over the years, had been sidelined. It's probably because we, we're a painters and we felt we weren't getting enough recognition, but everyone feels that. Um, so we thought, well, instead of waiting for somebody else to do the things we wanted to do, we wanted to be done to us why don't we do it ourselves and so we thought we'll set up an artist group we'll get a collection of painters together who can actually I, mean, I think the phrase that we used was was create our own weather so all we did to start with was both write a list of painters about our age or younger so not historic painters necessarily and um, we just started phoning and emailing people and seeing if they'd be interested in getting together as a as a collective and quite quickly we sort of got 20, 30 painters and we kind of settled on around about 60 would be, between 60 and 70 would be a good number. And I think what that does, uh, if you've got a collective of people, it kind of gives weight to what you do and you've also got a bit of a voice then. And then once we, was, we, um, we started exhibiting in London, Robert had been given the opportunity to use a space in Marylebone and we started putting on exhibitions. And from that, then we started to talk to, talk to museums, museums that had good 
collections of British painting. And we started to talk to museums to see whether they'd be interested in sort of having micro collections of contemporary painting. And that's how we started talking to Swindon. Amazing. And so out of the 40 artworks that we received in, in that very generous donation from contemporary British painting, uh, two of them are from by you. And one of them is called Burnt Gorse, which I personally really love. And it's very, very similar to that piece, which is behind you. Yes. Yes. And I was wondering whether you could tell us a little bit more about the incredible marks and the colours in that piece and, and how that came about and, and what it all represents. Um, I guess when I'm out in the landscape, what I'm looking for, what I'm interested in, I like those big gestures and intense colours and you wouldn't necessarily associate them with the sort of grey Essex coast, but there is intense colour out there and I'm kind of waiting for it to appear or sort of mining it a little bit. So this, this painting, which is Burnt Gorse, which you have the piece, a piece on paper, a little bit smaller than this, but it was part of this process. It was, um, it was only just down the road from the studio, actually. There was an area of the low cliff had burnt off and all the gorse bushes had caught fire. And I mean, it was a gift really, because all you had was the ash and then these black kind of branches, which had sort of charred and burnt. And it was just, it was a drawing in itself. So I started drawing that. And you see, there's a line at the top of the, um, above the orange, there's a line of little sort of indents, which is the tops, the roofs of the beach huts. Um, so this was, it was, um, I mean, it was a gift, really. The, the subject matter was a gift, and the orange really comes from the, the knowledge that it was burnt off. It was actually sort of mostly black. Um, and the other painting, which is a figure on the beach, um, was painted actually on, on that beach, sort of just down below there. So they were very closely, geographically, very closely connected. the burnt gorse piece feels very hot and energetic the, the figure with the yacht also almost feels quite um meditative like there's something quite calm about it the um I, I think when i'm out i'd like to think that anything i see could become a painting and you're testing it out by making a drawing you look at something you think oh that's quite interesting and you make a little drawing of it and sometimes that's all that happens because as soon as you start drawing you think oh hang on a minute this isn't going to work because i've got a big space here that's not going to be anything and this doesn't fit with this so drawing is like testing out the possibilities of it being a painting but i'd like to think that say the intensity of this experience could be painted and also the fact of standing on the edge of the sea and the waves just gently lapping in is also an experience but what i'm trying to do i think in my work it's kind of up to other people to tell you what you're doing, I think, actually. But what I think I'm trying to do is sort of trans transform that, transform the experience of looking and of drawing. You're sort of transforming it completely into paint. So, so that experience then only exists in paint. And I think I like sort of, I, there's a certain range of colours I like. I like the, the, that sort of um, slightly higher key and off key colours. And, and I like visible brush marks. And I think both of the paintings have got that but one is, is more, it feels quite intense. The other one, you're right, it does feel more meditative. I'd always drawn and painted since I was a child. So that's what I was interested in. And um, I'd always assumed as I went through school that I would end up going to art school. And I did foundation at the local um, college. And then I went off to London to art school. Um, and it's only when you get to the end of that, you realize there isn't a job called an artist. You have to create a job called an artist. And when I came back home and um, I was unemployed for about a year, carried on painting, but then I got a job as a part-time postman. And I did that for about 15 or 16 years. I had to get up at four in the morning, um, do first delivery. By 10 o'clock, I'd be free and had the rest of the day to paint. So that kind of... Um, supported me through and the fact that my wife worked for the nhs and had got a proper job um so between us we had a, we could sort of survive and um, i think the longer you carry on painting and you do it with integrity the more people start noticing what you're doing 
So the longer you do it, the sort of like these other things kind of accumulate around it. And uh, I think I'm very fortunate even now to be able to come into the studio each morning and paint. I think it's such a fantastic thing to do. And I know a lot of people would want to do that and can't. So I do feel very thankful that it's happened. But um, it's, um, it's sort of determination and um, not, uh, not being diverted from what you want to do. I think that was what it was. An interesting question, isn't it? I, th I think it's something to do with that kind of freedom that you have to just um, think about things you, that you enjoy, really, which is, I mean, a lot of people have to spend a lot of time doing stuff they don't really want to do. And I guess I have an opportunity for most days to just come in here and paint, and I love, I love doing it. It's not, it's not sort of, um, some people say, oh, that's nice. It is very frustrating being a painter because most of the time, most of the things you put on the canvas are gonna get covered up because they're not good enough. So it is quite frustrating, but when it happens, it's just the best thing. When you get a painting and all of a sudden it clicks and comes together. And, but I just love being in the studio and pottering around. It's my second home. People always want more recognition, don't they? And so I think, I think um, you know, I think if, if artists were held in slightly higher esteem in society, but I mean, maybe they are, I don't know. You always, you always feel that you just want a few more people to notice what you're doing. Um, because quite often, you know, I'd spend weeks in the studio here painting away and I thought no one is gonna see any of this. And no, one, no one's gonna look at it. I've got um, the other side of the studio, I've got uh, the racks where all the paintings are. There's probably 40 paintings on there which wow. no one has seen so far. Um, so that's, maybe you'd want to change that, but there's not a lot I'd want to change about it, actually. I do love it. Paint or pencil? Ooh, uh, pencil. <laughs> Oil paint or acrylic? Acrylic. Urban or rural? Rural. Earth or water? Oh, all mine's about that edge in between. Probably water. But so then I don't like swimming. <laughs> <laughs> Spring or autumn? Spring. Hot or cold? Cold. Beach or woodland? Beach, definitely. Sunrise or sunset? Sunrise. Blue or red? Oh dear. Um, <laughs> That's a hard one. Red. Red. <laughs> Expression or realism? Expression. Turner or constable? Constable. Picasso or Matisse? Oh goodness me, that's a hard one. Um, okay, if I've, got, if I've got to choose, he's got a lot of faults, but Picasso. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I have to admit that is the last one. And I wrote that last one thinking, I don't know what I would choose out of those two. So, no. um, yeah, <laughs> that's it's difficult. Probably, I, I saw that late Picasso show at the Tate, probably about the late 1980s, wasn't it? And it was just kind of blew me away. It was fantastic. And I think with Constable and Turner, I've kind of rediscovered Turner since Turner Contemporary has opened. I've been down there quite a lot. And some of the Turner shows they've put on have just been a revelation. Thank you so, so much. I think okay. that brings us to the end of the interview. Um, that was absolutely fascinating. <laughs>